Greetings to all my friends in Southern Wisconsin chapter of Trout Unlimited. Uh, this is Nathan and I uh, coming to you again uh, to talk to today about uh, surveys of trout streams uh, that we worked on in the Bear Creek watershed uh, in 2018. Uh, this was originally part one of a two-part series that I recorded back in December of 2020. I had to make some edits to my presentation um, and uh, this is the second go round of, of recording the Bear Creek watershed presentation. So uh, without further ado, let's, let's get right into it. Um, a little about myself. I'm originally from South Central Michigan uh, in the Jackson area. Uh, I attended Michigan State University uh, from 1998 to 2002 when I finished my undergraduate degree in fisheries. Uh, and then I was there for a number of years after that, uh, both taking graduate level classes and as a, a research technician, uh, working primarily on, on Great Lakes uh, projects. Uh, from December of 2008 through April of 2012, I was the Big Rivers Assistant Fisheries Biologist for the Indiana Department of Natural Resources, based in Southwest Indiana, uh, near Evansville, uh, down in the tri-state, primarily studying uh, large river species like um, paddlefish, shovelnose sturgeon, uh, flathead, blue channel catfish, sauger, uh, and even Asian carp um, in the Ohio River, the Wabash River, uh, the White River, and the Potoka River. Um, and then in April 2012, uh, I came to Wisconsin uh, and entered my current position with Wisconsin DNR as the fisheries biologist covering Columbia and Sauk counties uh, out of the point at field office uh, at the state game farm. Uh, I currently live in Green Lake, Wisconsin. Uh, I love hunting and fishing and, and uh, hiking. Uh, I particularly enjoy uh, trout fishing, both uh, in streams and chasing lake trout through the ice here on, on Green Lake. And I, I've really gotten into uh, traditional archery uh, of late as well. So let's dive right into it. Let's let's talk about uh, the evaluation uh, that that uh, Wisconsin DNR Fisheries did uh, of the the streams in the Bear Creek watershed in 2018. Uh, as we stand here on the County Highway N bridge, uh, looking upstream on Bear Creek uh, at the mouth of uh, McCarvo Creek. So in order to understand what we did in 2018 and how we went about it. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about our approach to trout stream sampling in the years leading up to that. Um, from 2008 to 2016, um, we uh, visited certain sites on certain streams every single year. Um, generally tried to visit uh, the same time every year, same two or three week period um, on the calendar. <clears throat> Um, and, and these we called our, our trend sampling locations. Um, these were the, the, the on streams generally that received the highest amount of use by the public. You know, they got the best access, the best trout populations, and therefore get the most use. Um, we also had a, a number of, of trout streams that were sampled on a rotational basis, either a three, six, or 12 year cycle. And, and the frequency of the, those rotational visits um, was kind of more or less in line with uh, how heavily pressured the streams were, you know, the amount of access, uh, the, you know, the abundance of the trout populations are, the more heavily used, you know, the better the trout population, the more frequently these streams will get visited. Uh, with some of our, you know, very small, very minor fishery streams only getting visited every 12 years. Um, and these streams were, you know, surveyed in a, using a shotgun approach, meaning it wasn't done systematically, you know, by watershed or anything like that. We, you know, we might visit a couple of streams in the Dell Creek watershed and a couple of streams, you know, in the Otter Creek watershed and a couple of streams in, you know, pick a watershed in a given year. Um, it, it wasn't, it wasn't done in a systematic way. Um, all our sampling was performed uh, per our sampling protocol uh, between June 15th and September 15th. This is 
when the fish are you know, fairly normally distributed throughout the streams, they're not in any kind of a spawning aggregate aggregation or, or on any kind of spawning migration. They're not in a winter pattern. They're out in their kind of their general normal distribution. Um, and when we visited a sampling location, uh, we would uh, electrofish a length of stream that was uh, 35 times the mean stream width, um, which uh, and work by uh, the now retired John Lyons, uh, that that distance was determined to be, um, you know, the distance at which, you know, you'd, you'd hit all of the different habitats in the stream reach and uh, basically, you know, get the, the fullest and most complete picture of the fishery um, with that amount of effort. Um, and then in 2017, uh, we, we changed our tact a little bit. Um, you know, we, we kept our trend sampling locations by and large. We didn't really have any changes there. These sites are still still our, our, our best sites on our best streams sampled annually at the same time each year. But we switched up the way we did our rotational sampling. Um, we, we organized things by watersheds or geographic areas which might be several smaller sub watersheds that all you know fit together in the same you know geographic area um and the six-year rotation uh now became this became the standard um 12-year sites were done away with those sites were rolled into um watershed groups that in and you know where they will get visited every six years um three-year sites you know that that's still open uh, to a little bit of interpretation. We have some some uh, ability to to visit sites, um, and that kind of that three year mark in between six year um, you know watershed rotations. Um, some streams require uh, a little bit more of our attention than than a six year visit. So, um, and then for these evaluations. Uh, stocking a fingerling trout in these streams is discontinued in the year prior to and the year of evaluation at a minimum. Um, talk more about that in a minute. Um, our protocols are unchanged as far as our, our timing, the distance we sample, uh, the water quality metrics that we you know collect while we're there, things like that. Um, those things remained unchanged. So let's let's orient ourselves a little bit. Um, and time and place to uh, to where the Bear Creek watershed falls within Wisconsin. Uh, you look at this map here of our level three eco regions of Wisconsin, and specifically at that purple region over in the southwest quadrant of the state, uh, called the Driftless Area and Western Corn Belt Plains. That is the eco region that the Bear Creek watershed falls into, uh, and you see the the watershed more or less circled here in red. Now, if we look, uh, if we zoom in on, on Southwest Wisconsin um, and look again at the, the circled watershed there, that's that's our Bear Creek watershed. You see where it fits in with all the other, all the other watersheds um, in Southwest Wisconsin. Um, you know, to the, to the east, you've got Honey Creek. Uh, to the north, you've got the uh, kind of the upper Baraboo River tributaries uh, and to the west, uh, you've got your your Willow Creek watershed. Um, so, oh, and if we go back one, you can actually see the years on this map um, when each of these watersheds uh, will be evaluated uh, by you know the the biologist uh, that that oversees that area, be it Brad Sims here in the south, uh, Justin Hagland. Uh, in Iowa, Richland counties, myself in Sauk and Columbia. Um, so, and now if we blow that watershed up even further, uh, the Bear Creek watershed, uh, we can kind of see it straddles the line between Sauk County where the stream streams originate and Richland County uh, where they terminate. Uh, you've got the main stem of Bear Creek generally you know, flowing more or less north to south. And then as you move south from the headwaters of Bear Creek, you've got four classified tributary streams, um, three of which at the time of the evaluation were class two. That would include Kroll Creek, McCarville Creek, 
and Marble Creek. And then we had one class one stream, which was Beiser Creek. All flow kind of from northeast to southwest uh, before entering Bear Creek. Uh, just a word about trout stream classifications as we start talking about class one, two, and three streams. Um, and and as they as they sat in 2018, as I mentioned, Beiser Creek was the class one stream in the watershed, with Bear, Kroll, McCarvel, and Marble being the class two streams. And we did not have any class three streams at that time. Um, and there's a little bit of a misconception uh, that class one streams are, are always better uh, that they're just brimming with fish and and people think well i should go and fish there right and just skip those class two streams and well no that's not really the case uh, and it's important uh, that folks realize that trout stream classification is not a direct analog for fishery quality um, in terms of what the angler is going to find um, in that stream just a little bit of the uh the um, sort of legal definitions of what constitutes a class one trout stream uh, contains trout spawning habitat and naturally produced fry, fingerling, and yearling fish in sufficient numbers to utilize the habitat. Or the stream contains trout with two or more age groups above the age of one year and natural reproduction and survival of wild fish in sufficient numbers to utilize the available trout habitat and to sustain the fishery without stocking. Now, a key phrase um, in this passage is utilize the habitat or utilize the available trout habitat. Um, keep in mind that, that some streams are bigger than others and it's, it's all a question of scale. Um, now for a class two stream, uh, that contains a population of trout made up of one or more age groups above the age of one year in sufficient numbers to indicate substantial survival from one year to the next and may or may not have natural reproduction of trout occurring. However, stocking is necessary to fully utilize the available trout habitat or to sustain the fishery. So multiple age groups of trout, they survive, you know, throughout the year, uh, you know, through both the extremes of winter and summer. Um, and maybe you've got some natural reproduction, maybe you don't. Um, and really in order to maintain a fishery, we got to stock. Class three streams, um, we have to stock fish there every year to provide any sort of significant harvest. Um, and these streams do not provide habitat suitable for trout survival throughout the year or for natural reproduction. Basically trout can inhabit the stream for part of the year, but if we didn't put them there, they wouldn't be there. Now, taking a look at the current fishing regulations, uh, or at least the regulations at the time of this, this evaluation in 2018, um, Bear Creek, which is seen here in the orange stream thread, um, goes by the 12 inch minimum length limit and two fish daily bag limit for trout. Um, whereas the four classified tributary streams all fell under the county base trout regulation, which is an eight inch minimum and three fish daily bag limit. In terms of public access for fishing, um, as well as, as habitat improvement projects uh, in the watershed, uh, we do have a standalone named fishery area here, uh, the Bear Creek fishery area. Um, fee title lands, uh, which are lands that, that the state owns uh, completely and outright, are shown in green. And then we also have stream bank easements, um, one on, on uh, Marble Creek, uh, one on the lower end of McCarville Creek, an extensive uh, easement of over four miles on the main stem of Bear Creek, and then a small easement up here on Kroll Creek. Um, and I should note that uh, trout habitat improvement projects were undertaken from 2011 through 2015 on this uh, four plus mile long uh, stretch of Bear Creek upstream of County Highway N. Uh, and that was thanks to a tremendous partnership um, spearheaded by Trout Unlimited and specifically the Aldo Leopold chapter, uh, as well as uh, NRCS out of Baraboo, uh, Sauk County Planning and Zoning, um, Wisconsin DNR, and the, the um, 
riparian landowners uh, on the lands where we own these easements. A massive undertaking and couldn't have been couldn't have been accomplished without a, a, a just a wonderful partnership. Talking a little bit about brown trout stocking history um, in the watershed uh, in Bear Creek proper, uh, Bear Creek had an annual quota of small fingerling brown trout uh, stocked each year, uh, roughly 5,700 fish annually. And then also um, the fish would get small numbers of surplus adult brood stock brown trout. These are um, adult brood fish. Uh, no longer needed down at Nevin Hatchery, essentially. Cull, cull fish that uh, we stock out into public waters uh, to provide an extra uh, you know, fishing opportunity for the anglers. Um, small fingerling stocking ended in 2016 in Bear Creek. Uh, for the purposes of this evaluation. Um, and then in the tributary streams, uh, Kroll Creek also had a, an annual small fingerling brown trout quota of just over a thousand fish annually. That stocking ended in 2016 as well. And then no brown trout had been stocked in McCarville, Beiser, or Marble Creeks since the year 2000. We'll talk a little bit about the, the sampling that we did in 2018. If you take a look at this map of the watershed here on the left-hand side of the screen, these red triangles represent all of the locations uh, that we did uh, fishery surveys in 2018. Uh, Bear Creek proper included sites 100 through 108, uh, starting up here in the headwaters with site 100 and ending actually down here below the classified trout water at site 108. And then Kroll Creek included sites 111 and 112. McCarville Creek included sites 115 and 116. Beiser Creek included sites 109 and 110. And Marble Creek included sites 113 and 114. Um, and I'll, I'll be referring a lot to these site numbers later on. So um, just, just keep this map in your head um, as you go and, uh, and listen. Now, we, as I said, we ended the stocking in these streams uh, and after 2016. So there was no stocking in 2017 or 2018. Uh, and that was to help us assess natural reproduction in the streams or young of year fish um, uh, produced in 2018 and natural recruitment of fish. That's fish that were um, hatched in 2017 that survived until 2018 to, to the yearling stage. Um, we visited 17 sampling locations in total. Uh, again, nine on Bear Creek and two on each of the classified uh, tributaries. And we did the sampling between July 12th and August 16th. And we tried to, to match our visits to the respective streams up um, with, with the times on the calendar that we visited in, in previous years. Um, and we also always avoid uh, sampling after big rain events as much as possible. You know, we want we want to be sampling these streams in ter at uh, base flow conditions. A um, little bit more about our sampling in 2018. Uh, the equipment that we utilized uh, was based on stream size, um, a backpack shocker, uh, was utilized at the Upper Bear Creek Site 100, and then all tributary stream sampling locations. Uh, tow barge was used um, further downstream uh, on Bear Creek, uh, both in Middle Bear Creek, Sites 101 through 104, and Lower Bear Creek, Sites 105 uh, through 108. Uh, again, we sampled 35 times the mean stream width at each location, and that put our, our sample site uh, range um, you know, depending on the location between 100 meters, uh, which is the minimum amount, um, and 315 meters. Um, and then at each, uh, each site, we collected uh, flow rate or flow volume uh, in cubic feet per second, uh, stream temperature, uh, pH, conductivity, total dissolved solids, and salinity. Um, and at these, at these sampling locations, uh, we collected all fish species uh, that we stunned with our, our electrical electrofishing equipment, uh, including game and non-game fish. So we went out there on the landscape. Uh, we did these fish surveys. Um, so where are the brown trout uh, in the Bear Creek watershed? 
as we, we take a look at a couple of shining examples here um, in photos uh, provided by Pat Hasberg. Well, before I get into where the brown trout were found, I just want to touch base on some terminology I'm going to use. I'm going to talk a lot about catch rates. And what you know, catch rates are, that, that refers to the number of fish collected divided by the distance sampled. And we generally boil it down to um, one common unit of measure, which is fish per mile. Um, sample sites are, you know, as I said, less than a mile in length. So we have to utilize a catch rate factor, AKA the CPUE factor, uh, which is the number of station lengths needed to equal one mile. So for example, there's 1600 meters in one mile and you sampled 175 meter station, 175 goes into 1600 9.14 times. So that's your CPUE or your catch rate factor. So say in that 175 meter station, um, we collected 87 brown trout. You multiply 87 by 9.14, you get 795 brown trout per mile. And that catch is then broken down into age zero or young of your fish, uh, which are fish less than four inches in length. Uh, age one fish, uh, which for brown trout is fish 4.0 to 7.9 inches. Adult fish, which is uh, brown trout over eight inches. And then preferred length fish, which is fish over 12 inches. So as we look at the five uh, trout streams in the watershed, uh, we see uh, here that uh, you now Bear Creek led the way. Um, all sites averaged it together. Uh, we were just under three, uh, just under 300 brown trout per mile. And, and you see the peak of the bars in the graph is the total, total catch rate. And it's made up of these different components, age zero, age one, um, adult sub preferred fish, which is eight to 11.9 inch fish. And then adult preferred fish, which is fish over 12 inches in the yellow. So the four components added together equals the total. Um, Crow Creek also had about 100 brown trout per mile, give or take. Um, and then McCarville, Beiser, and Marble Creeks had zero brown trout. Um, and those are brook trout streams, and um, we'll get more into those in the, the second half of this presentation. But if you see here the dotted and dashed lines, um, those are the uh, total CPUE median catch rates for the driftless, which is the, the dotted line, uh, driftless region and then um, streams on a statewide basis, which is the dashed line. Um, and that's uh, based on data from uh, stream surveys from 2007 to 2014, um, all, all surveys that collected at least one trout. So that's the measuring stick that we're comparing against the, the region, the essentially the eco region and the statewide median catch rates, a median being the middle of the pack the 50% mark. But if we split this out and start to divide um, Bear Creek into different reaches, uh, upper, middle, and lower Bear Creek, we start to see some, some differences uh, begin to form. Uh, upper Bear Creek is kind of right around that, that 300 fish per mile mark, but middle Bear Creek uh, is performing a bit better um, up and nearing that 550 fish per mile catch rate. Um, and then lower Bear Creek, you know, by the time you get down there, uh, the catch rate drops off precipitously um, down to less than 50 brown trout per mile. Um, so that, that tells us that our, our streams in, in upper and, and middle group Bear Creek are performing a lot better uh, relative to lower Bear Creek. And middle Bear Creek is actually kind of standing up at least to the middle of the pack uh, in terms of brown trout abundance on a statewide basis and is approaching the middle of the pack um, in that driftless region. Now, if we take a look and split that further into every one of the 17 sites that we visited, um, Bear Creek 100 through 108, Crow Creek 111, 112, Marble Creek 115, 116, uh, Beiser Creek 109, 110, and Marble Creek 113, 114, um, we can see once again our different sampling locations in that, that middle Bear Creek stretch 
um, some of which are, are really performing um, quite well relative to, to region and statewide uh, levels. Um, you know, even one site here approaching 700 brown trout per mile. So you can't always tell the full story of a stream um, just looking just looking at all the data uh, from all your sampling locations you know thrown together. Sometimes it helps to to split it out and take a look at things uh, either by by stream reach or even by individual stream site. Um, and once again, like I said, picture the highway N is right in here between station 104 and 105, kind of that dividing line between middle and lower Bear Creek and lower Bear Creek. Uh, just doesn't hold up in terms of, of trout abundance compared to middle and upper Bear Creek. So now if we zoom in and just look at uh, trout by age class, individual age class, um, and look at age zero or young of year fish, uh, we see both upper and middle Bear Creek um, in the absence of stocking have uh, good to very good natural reproduction occurring. Uh, lots of uh, lots of young of your fish found in the surveys, uh, both in Upper Bear Creek and the four sites of, of Middle Bear Creek, with you know falling well above the median uh, age zero catch rates, both statewide and and region wide. Um, so performing pretty well in, in terms of of naturally uh, naturally produced age zero fish. Crow Creek down here really doesn't measure up to uh, to region and state averages. Uh, in turn or medians, excuse me, in terms of age zero fish. So there's some minimal reproduction, but uh, but really not much to speak of. And and in low in Lower Bear Creek, uh, we see that we actually found uh, no age zero trout at any location in Lower Bear Creek. So starting to get an indication of why overall trout abundance may be lower down there. Uh, it doesn't have the reproduction. Now if we zoom in and just look at age one fish or yearling fish. Um, you know, it, just based on 2018 alone, it, it looks like upper and middle Bear Creek may be falling a bit short of the middle of, of the pack in terms of performance in, in uh, class one streams region-wide and statewide. Just not quite there yet. Um, and then lower Bear Creek, not surprising. Uh, no reproduction and very little uh, recruitment to age one down there. Um, Coral Creek, again, has some, some minimal natural recruitment occurring there, uh, but falling well short of, uh, of region and statewide medians. Um, and then again, your three brook trout streams uh, showing nothing. And if we zoom in and just look at adult trout, and that's, now we're talking uh, brown trout over eight inches. Oh, we see we see Middle Bear Creek. It's actually performing quite well with uh, some locations um, in there approaching that uh, that driftless area median uh, catch rate for adult trout. Um, Upper Bear Creek lagging a little behind in terms of adult brown trout. That's more a function of, you know, the size of the stream being relatively small up in those upper reaches and, and just a, a lack of available, um, you know, good habitat for adult fish based on the size of the stream. Uh, the, the one area where, where Lower Bear Creek seems to show uh, even a, you know, a faint pulse uh, of promise in terms of, of trout abundance is, is uh, in terms of adult fish. And that's, that's one area that, that Lower Bear Creek actually has pretty good um, adult trout habitat. Uh, good, cold, deep water, um, you know, submerged, woody cover, uh, deep holes, things like that. So if uh, if there's one thing that Lower Bear Creek has some of, it's it's adult brown trout. Uh, Cruel Creek uh, falls pretty low on the list, uh, kind of a combination of you know, minimal natural reproduction and recruitment. And also, again, it is a, it's a pretty small stream and it just lacks the, the deeper cover type habitats to hold a lot of, a lot of adult trout. And then when we look at uh, preferred length adult brown trout, that's fish 12 inches and larger, um, upper Bear Creek, none to speak of, again, just a function of the habitat and the size of the stream. Uh, Middle Bear Creek actually performing very well uh, relative to both 
uh, the Driftless region and uh, and the state as a whole, um, with uh, some sites um, up around probably 140 uh, adults over 12 inches per mile. So well well above the middle of the pack. Oops, and then Lower Bear Creek. Again, some sites approaching that that statewide median for for adults over 12 inches. Again, Lower Bear Creek does have some decent habitat for holding some larger trout. So if we take take a little bit uh, a little bit wider look, um, we've actually been visiting a number of these locations. Um, on Bear Creek for several years in a row, evaluating the stream uh, after those habitat improvement projects that I talked about earlier. And we see if we expand out um, from 2018 to also include 2017 and 2019, um, these sites in Upper and Middle Bear Creek, sites 100 through 104, actually are showing a trend of increasing brown trout abundance. Um, whereby when we visited in 2019, um, you know, the mean total brown trout catch rate was well above uh, the median for both the Driftless region and, and the state as a whole, with some individual sites, you know, pushing 1,100 brown trout per mile. So very encouraging things are on the upswing uh, in Bear Creek in terms of trout abundance. And as a result, performance uh, against other are against class one streams, both regionally and statewide. Um, if we just zoom in again uh, to look at the individual components that make up that overall catch rate, um, and you look at just the age zero or the young of year brown trout catch rates, 2017 through 2019 at those five sites, again, we see this nice increasing trend. Oops. And again, these are all naturally produced fish because we stopped stocking after 2016. So this natural reproduction is on the upswing. Um, you know, at some locations, we've got greater than 800 young of year brown trout per mile uh, in two, as of 2019. Um, so, you know, in order to have big fish, you got to have little fish and the stream is, is producing naturally um, those little fish. And if we look at the yearling brown trout catch rates, 2017 through 2019 at those five sites, again, we see this overall increasing trend uh, of, of, uh, of yearling brown trout, um, which makes sense if you've got uh, more young of year each year, the, the following year you should have uh, increasing numbers of, of yearling fish. And we are, we are seeing that. We're seeing some sites in Upper and Middle Bear Creek even uh, surpassing those those regional and statewide medians. So very encouraging. And then looking at uh, total adult catch rates at those five sites across the three-year period, again, same story, increasing trend uh, of abundance of adult trout. So we're starting to, starting to see a common theme here. All, uh, all sizes and life stages of trout are on the, on the upswing in Bear Creek. And again, the mean... The mean catch rate of adult trout at those five sites in 2019 um, was above the region and statewide median. So, you know, we're, we're at or better than the middle of the pack now in Bear Creek. And then just moving on to the preferred length fish, the 12 inch and greater fish. Um, again, seeing that overall trend of increasing abundance of those larger trout. Uh, some some individual sampling locations now approaching that, that 250 per mile mark, uh, fish over 12 inches. So very encouraging. Um, just added this uh, to illustrate a little bit of what we learn uh, through our, our trend monitoring that I talked about earlier. Um, that's, that's sites that we visit every year. For instance, uh, site 101 from this evaluation, uh, that's at the Fargan Sprecher line fence for those of you who know the, know the landowner names that go along with these properties. Um, that's a 10 year period of data from 2010 through 2019 from our trend monitoring. I just wanted to illustrate um, uh, some things that happened along this timeline. Um, and those specifically were um, this 
the stretch of stream where this um, location exists uh, was improved um, in 2011, big habitat improvement project. We started to see abundance increase in the years following that, that project. But then going from 2013 to 2014, we saw this big crash. Uh, numbers were cut by more than 50% at all all size classes of trout. And this was a common theme uh, that happened across southern Wisconsin on a number of streams in that same period, uh, 2013 into 2014 and 2015. We actually saw these big declines in abundance and, Brown, and uh, Bear Creek was no different. And then we see since that time, um, things have swung the other way and numbers are on the rise again. Um, and that is also a trend that we've noticed at a number of our streams in southern Wisconsin. They went through this 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 low period, and now uh, many are on the rise once again. So uh, these streams are recovering. But uh, just a long roundabout way of of, of illustrating that uh, that commonality that we saw in, in a bunch of our streams. So some takeaway messages. Um, uh, for brown trout in the Bear Creek watershed. Brown trout are found in Bear Creek and Kroll Creek. Um, and abundance, natural reproduction, and natural recruitment is low in Kroll Creek. Uh, those, those metrics fall well below the middle of the pack uh, when you compare them to class one trout, brown trout streams, uh, both in the Driftless region and across the state as a whole. And really, because the stream just does not perform up to snuff, um, you know, compared to, compared to those, those class one streams, the class two designation for Crow Creek really is correct. Um, and, uh, adult abundance was low there as well. You know, the adults that, that would have been present in 2018, uh, would have been the product of, of some natural reproduction and, and some stocking, uh, from those pre 2017 years. It's a, it's a small stream uh, relative, you know, if you compare it to a stream like Bear Creek um, size-wise. Um, and it's got some thermal impairments. Uh, there is a, a dam and a pond uh, up, up on Upper Kroll Creek, and that's, that really uh, impacts the stream in a negative way uh, in terms of temperature, warms the water up, and then groundwater has a long way to go to cool that stream down enough uh, to be uh, suitable for trout. So... It's also got limited public access. Uh, we do have one short easement there. Um, and, and, you know, brown trout in, in Crow Creek as well also have free access uh, to emigrate out to, uh, to Upper Bear Creek um, once they get out past the confluence. And so, you know, because of these factors, you know, because it's small, access is relatively limited, it's got these thermal impairments, um, you know, determined that uh, really... You know, it's it's time to stop stocking brown trout in Cruel Creek. Uh, the return on the investment doesn't really uh, justify the cost. So moving forward, we're no longer going to stock Cruel Creek. Um, brown trout abundance in Bear Creek is highest upstream of County Highway N, um, and it decreases with downstream distance from County N. Um, so moving down into the lower bear, reaches of Bear Creek. Um, and that's a function of habitat. Um, you just, you, it's very low gradient down there. Uh, you don't have a lot of suitable spawning habitat. Uh, uh, pretty much a total lack of uh, rock or gravel substrate, uh, no riffles, um, you know, areas that trout would want to spawn. So you don't have, you don't have trout being produced down there. Uh, you do have a bit of, of decent adult habitat. Uh, you do find some adult trout down there, and those are, by and large, going to be trickle-down fish from, from further up up the stream. So, But the good news is we do have brown trout abundance uh, increasing um, steadily upstream of County Highway N, and even in the absence of stocking. And that's thanks to really good uh, natural reproduction of trout and then also uh, the enhanced habitat uh, there that uh, that came through those habitat improvement projects. Um, middle and upper Bear Creek are uh, middle of the pack or better uh, compared to other, compared to class one streams, both regionally and statewide. And for that reason, um, we ended up reclassifying Bear Creek. Uh, it is through 
uh, the classification process. Now, uh, eight miles of Upper Bear Creek is now class one trout water. Um, and we're going to continue evaluating Bear Creek, Bear Creek itself, Bear Creek proper, in the absence of stocking, just to see, you know, how the stream continues to evolve um, without us helping it along. Um, now, as brown trout abundance increases, uh, there may be some implications for brook trout in the system, and I'll talk about those uh, in a minute. So what about those brook trout? Um, you know, a little bit about uh, the, the stocking history of brook trout in Bear Creek. Uh, we have not stocked any fingerling brook trout in Bear Creek or its tributaries um, since the year 2000. Uh, we've stocked uh, a handful of surplus, uh, you know, culled brood stock from Nevin Hatchery uh, since 2016. That's 50 fish a year. Um, just put out there as a kind of a supplemental angling opportunity, you know, quality fishing opportunity. Um, and so any young of year yearling and most adults found out there in our surveys are the, are the, um, product of natural reproduction. So, uh, and for the tributary streams, all brook trout are naturally reproduced because we're, we're not doing any stocking of any kind there. So where are the brook trout? Well, if we look, uh, look here, uh, at Bear Creek and tributaries, we kind of see in Bear Creek itself, uh, those brook trout uh, in 2018 were concentrated um, in Upper Bear Creek. That's above the confluence of Bear Creek with Coral Creek. Um, we did find one or two brook trout in Middle Bear Creek and then none in Lower Bear Creek and none in Coral Creek. Um, and then in our, uh, our three brook trout tributaries, uh, McCarville, Beiser, and Marble Creeks, uh, we had you know varying abundance uh, of brook trout, you know, generally between 75 and 125 uh, brook trout per mile on average. And you see Marble and Beiser Creek uh, even held some uh, some preferred length brook trout, which is brook trout over 10 inches. So just a little refresher on where these sites are located that I'm referencing. Upper Bear Creek, site 100, up here above that Crow Creek confluence. Um, and then McCarville Creek, 115, 116, Beiser Creek, 109, 110, and Marble Creek, 113 and 114. If you split that out and look at every site individually, uh, we see again, just that single site on Bear Creek uh, performing well above uh, regional and statewide uh, median catch rates for class one streams, uh, brook trout streams. Then, uh, you know, McCarville Creek has, has one, one location. That's, that's the upstream most site, 115. Um, uh, that's approaching that, that regional catch rate median. Um, and then Beiser and Marble Creeks, eh, they're, they're lagging a bit behind that, that median catch rate. Um, I should note there is a dairy farm located uh, directly on the creek in between sites 115 and 116. Uh, the stream actually flows right through the center of the barnyard. So uh, we may be seeing some uh, some impacts related to that uh, farming operation on the creek, um, which causes brook trout to essentially disappear from the stream uh, below that point. If we, uh, if we just look at... Uh, Site 100, uh, Upper Bear Creek, uh, by itself, and we look at our our trend monitoring time series, which began in 2013, and and actually I'm, I'm able to present data here all the way through 2020. Um, we see that in most years, or in all years, um, the uh, the total brook trout catch rate at this site is is at least equal to and most often greater than uh, median catch rates, um, you know, for the driftless region and statewide. So this, this stream at this location is performing essentially at the class one level in terms of brook trout. And we see we have a good mix uh, of age zero, age one, and adult brook trout. Um, don't have those preferred length, you know, 10 inch plus brook trout uh, up in Upper Bear Creek, you know, mostly just as a function of uh, 
of stream size. It's just the habitat isn't big enough to hold big trout. Uh, but as I said, good mixes of, of age zero yearling and, and uh, adult fish over seven inches. Um, some potentially concerning things on the horizon, however, um, you know, as we're starting to see uh, what I call the rise of the brown trout in Upper Bear Creek. Uh, looking here again at site 100 um, with both trout species on the same slide, specifically kind of looking from 2016 through 2020. And overall, we see brook trout numbers dropping off. And during that same general time period, we see a trend of increasing brown trout abundance. Um, so, you know, brown trout are, are moving up the system, is what this is telling you, um, in kind of taking over these areas that were once uh, dominated by brook trout. Um, and we're even starting to see some, some preferred length brown trout uh, up in the upper reaches of Bear Creek. So what's causing this? Um, you know, what, what's the hypothesis for increasing brook trout numbers and, and decreasing increasing brown trout and decreasing brook trout in Upper Bear Creek. You know, is it is it magic? Is it sorcery? Um, as we see the trout magician, uh, Justin Haglund there, levitating a fish. Um, no, no, it's it's not not any kind of hocus pocus. Um, it's it's simply down to, you know, conditions may just favor brown trout. Um, now, if you're just looking at the water temperature alone, Upper Bear Creek is very cold. Um, and just based simply on that, it favors brook trout. However, um, you know, we've got this, this increasing brown trout abundance downstream. Maybe we're hitting a point down in, in Middle Bear Creek where those fish are needing to, um, you know, disperse from that area and search for, for additional space. You know, those habitats may be filling up in Middle Bear Creek. And these fish are seeking out new areas um, in search of space. Um, and also the gradient and kind of the general habitat favor brown trout. Uh, even, in, even in Upper Bear Creek, you've got a pretty steep gradient. Um, you know, you've got fast water, uh, a lot of hard rock and gravel substrate, undercut banks, kind of the natural embodiment of the kind of habitat that we try to create in our brown trout habitat enhancement projects, uh, just in a natural form, kind of like, uh, kind of like narrowing down a stream and speeding it up and exposing, you know, that rock and gravel substrate and, you know, putting in these lunker structures under the banks and things like that. Uh, we have that kind of in the natural form in Upper Bear Creek. So the habitat favors brown trout. Um, just some tidbits I'm throwing in here at the end uh, from, from the year 2020. Um, we've been trying to catalog uh, the genetic profile of, of brook trout in Bear Creek. And so to do that, we, we went out and took or attempted to take um, genetic material uh, from 50 brook trout uh, in Bear Creek. And we started out at our site 100 uh, when we went to do our normal trend um, sample in, in 2020. And, you know, unlike past years, we weren't able to collect uh, very many brook trout at all in 2020. I think you know, we might have gotten something like 30 out of the 50 samples that we needed uh, from Site 100. You know, despite a lot of, of extra sampling, both upstream and downstream of our, our normal station, I know everything that popped out pretty much was, was a brown trout. So we had to move further up the watershed and... We sampled the stream uh, up, up at its uppermost uh, crossing of Highway 130, kind of up here where this yellow star is. Um, and what we found was that uh, up at that point, uh, brook trout are still very much the dominant species um, with a total catch rate up around 1,200 fish per mile um, and even some, uh, some 10 plus inch brook trout, you know, hiding under the, uh, the overhanging grass up there. Uh, whereas, you know, brown trout at that location were down below 400 fish per mile. Um, there were some, some, uh, vast stretches of that site that we sampled up there that, that actually still had, uh, you know, relatively slow flowing water, uh, that, you know, a little bit flatter gradient, 
Um, and anytime you'd hit a stretch like that, you'd load up on brook trout. And then anytime you got into a, a spot in that survey uh, where the gradient was a little steeper and the water was running faster, you'd, you'd trend more heavily toward brown trout. So it just, it really helped to illustrate the differences in habitat preference, even within one single sampling location um, for these two species. Um, but again, far upper Bear Creek, brook trout are still the dominant species. And I should mention, uh, we were able to complete um, our genetic sample collection up here at this upper site. So results pending. Uh, takeaway messages on, on Bear Creek watershed brook trout. Uh, McCarville, Beiser, and Marble Creeks all have self-sustaining brook trout populations. They haven't been stocked now in 20 years, um, and yet, uh, you know, they've, they've got all life stages of trout. Um, now, while their abundance is well below Class 1 medians, um, that doesn't mean that these streams are performing poorly. Um, and really... You know, you might say, well, they should be class two, right? And I'd say you're wrong. Um, and it all goes back to uh, that, that clause, um, you know, from the class one stream designation, utilizing the available habitat. Uh, we have naturally reproducing brook trout, utilizing the habitat to the fullest extent uh, because these are such small streams. And stocking really isn't likely to affect a drastic improvement uh, in, in either abundance or size structure of trout in these streams. So, so you know, based on that, I say they meet, uh, met the definition of, a, of a class one streams. And um, overall, however, I would say brook trout abundance, um, th they're still abundant in Upper Bear Creek, but that abundance is decreasing um, and they're being replaced by brown trout. Um, and that's because brown trout have some competitive advantages that we talked about, um, you know, linked to the habitat. Um, and then our uppermost sample site on Bear Creek, uh, the one that we visited in 2020 to complete our genetic sampling, um, indications from, from that, that, uh, that area, you know, indicate that brook trout are still dominant near the headwaters of, of Bear Creek. So, uh, and we did end up reclassifying um, Bear Creek, uh, effective January 1st of 2021, um, from the headwater downstream to County Highway N has been reclassified um, from Class 2 to Class 1. Uh, McCarville Creek has also um, been reclassified from Class 2 to Class 1 over its entire length, uh, as has Marble Creek uh, been reclassified to Class 1 uh, the entire stream. Some just some additional management recommendations moving forward. Uh, we want to retain the current fishing regulations on all trout streams in the watershed. Um, we also want to maintain uh, the, the trout stream classifications for Beiser Creek, which is class one, and Kroll Creek, which is class two. Uh, we want to discontinue brown trout stocking in Kroll Creek. Um, we want to maintain the current trout stream classification for Bear Creek downstream of Highway N, which is class two. And we want to expand our easement and fee title ownership wherever possible to provide increased habitat management and public access opportunities. Um, and as part of that, uh, that at least in terms of fee title acquisition, that's land that we buy um, outright. Uh, it'll require um, expansion of our approved acquisition boundaries uh, for Bear Creek fishery area um, through master the master planning process. Um, so, you know, on the radar for us um, in the Bear Creek watershed uh, was the MUNS acquisition. We'll talk more about that in a minute. That was a 28 acre parcel uh, right in the little uh, unincorporated community of Bear Valley. Uh, there's also that impoundment I mentioned on Kroll Creek um, that's causing the thermal impairment to both Kroll Creek and then, as a result, Bear Creek uh, downstream of the confluence. Um, you know, in order, if we ever wanted to get rid of that impoundment, we would need to purchase that land um, and, and get rid of the dam. And that's where that expansion of the acquisition boundary comes in. We would need... Um, authority to purchase land there that we don't currently have uh, because it's outside of our approved acquisition boundary. 
Um, and, you know, indications, uh, you know, based on the fish community above and below um, uh, the dairy operation on McCarville Creek indicate that perhaps um, manure and or runoff inputs from that farm may be negatively impacting the stream. Uh, we found no trout uh, below the dairy farm in 2018. Um, and in past years, we have uh, found the same, uh, you know, distinct differences, both in number of trout or just fish of any kind period above and below that, that operation. So something to keep an eye on moving forward. Um, a little bit more about the MUNS acquisition. Uh, in addition to uh, Bear Creek Fishery Area, it was part of the estate of Doug Munns, uh, who passed away in 2018. And then uh, from there, uh, the point of contact uh, became his brother, Richard Munns. Uh, Richard approached us about the possibility of, of selling uh, part of part of this land to the department. Uh, we met on site the first time, January of 20, or not January, excuse me, July of 2019. Um, and then unfortunately, uh, during our, our uh, ranking and, and negotiation process, the acquisition process, uh, Mr. Munns passed away uh, this, this past March of 2020. Um, but thankfully, his, his family was, was open to uh, continuing that, that, uh, that, the sale of that land to us. And we got uh, Natural Resources Board approval uh, to make the purchase in August of 2020. Uh, it was approved by the governor in October. Uh, the final survey of the property uh, occurred in November of 2020. And that sale is now closed. And we own uh, that, that new 28-acre parcel as of uh, February 3rd of 2021. So, hooray. Um, it gets us about a third of a mile of additional frontage on Bear Creek, as well as control of of uh, this really neat uh, adjacent uh, wetland complex. And then just a cool note about Bear Creek uh, and streams. And this is this is fairly common across southwest Wisconsin, uh, where you have brook trout and brown trout uh, existing together in the stream. Uh, you will at times uh, run into these, these hybrids uh, called tiger trout. And that is a cross between a brook and a brown trout. Uh, as you see one here that uh, Pat Hasberg recently caught in the creek. So just uh, just some acknowledgments. Um, and, and you can see this this was about to enter into part two, uh, the Columbia County presentation that I already recorded. Um, I'm actually going to zoom to the end of part two to my acknowledgment slide um, just to uh, say thank you. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, well, I'll just say thank you uh, to Toff Wells with Southern Wisconsin TU for um, kind of spurring me on and, and uh, you know, informing me on the interest uh, that, that uh, everybody had uh, in the Bear Creek, you know, watershed. Uh, and then uh, also to Pat Hasberg and Amy Klusmeyer for, for sending me all the wonderful pictures uh, that you saw throughout a lot of uh, a lot of the Bear Creek presentation um, and uh, you know a big thanks to Trout Unlimited both the Aldo Leopold chapter and the Southern Wisconsin chapter for their um, kind of their support of, of our mission of uh, you know monitoring the health of these streams and you know improving fish populations and, and habitat uh, it's a great partnership that uh, all of us at, at Wisconsin DNR are extremely thankful for um, so um, with that, I'll say uh, if anyone has questions about uh, this presentation, they should contact me directly, um, either via email, nathan.nye at wisconsin.gov, or via phone, 608-635-5143. Uh, and with that, again, I'll just say thank you, um, and uh, looking forward to some, some warm spring weather coming up and, and getting out some, doing some trout fishing. I'm sure you all are, too. Uh, take care. Bye now.